<clears throat> so for those catching us on the YouTube, I'll have put that uh, forum that was just dropped in the chat. It will be in the description of the YouTube video if you'd like to grab that. And uh, it'll still be up until January 1st when I'll start making my decisions as to who will play and what. And before we move into this most final of combats versus the enemy that we created in character creation as, uh, as a companion, as a foil, and eventually as a villain, I want to ask, what is everyone here's connection to them specifically? For those that uh, need a reminder or for those just joining us. So uh, let's start with Adam. Books, now bottles. What is your connection to Captain Atticus Stiles? So, he was the uh, lover of my sister, and he, uh, my sister died shortly after birth. Uh, sister was obviously an elf, and uh, Atticus Stiles was basically blamed um, for his sister's death. Therefore, uh, Navardi uh, became very uh, filled with hatred and bitterness towards not only Atticus Stiles, but also all humans. He kind of blamed them for, you know, the problems of the world. And <clears throat> that's where the, it started. And then uh, at, uh, Navardi, during character creation, used blood magic to um, defame Attica Styles. He was a prominent captain, and he defamed them to uh, a life of piracy. Okay. Captain Ferris. Oh. Seems to have disappeared. Do we still have you? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Uh, what is your connection to Attica Styles? Sarissa. Did... Headphone down helps. Uh, Sarissa did not really have any connection to Attica Styles before the campaign began. She was dragged into the Attica Styles adventure through kid tomes and uncle books. But. As I've come to discover more about more about him, she was actually really starting to like him as a character until they found out that he is becoming a uh, dead. Yeah, he was so great when he was alive. You know, Amazing. out there, savior of halflings, um, that free captain who's trying to head us, help us out, seems to think he was a. <laughs> yeah, Meryl Pigsworthy. Is that captain? All right, Scourge. What is your connection with Attica Styles? Uh, don't have any direct connection as far as history. I'm just like uh, the captain, the Commodore. I was brought into this uh, late in the game by our interaction with Styles post mortem. <clears throat> so one thing to remember is that at the start of the campaign. All of you were gathered in Port Peril for for a get-together drink, if you remember that, and you were poisoned and dragged onto the Wormwood. Yep. And uh, the person who brought that together was Atticus Styles in some way for everyone. But uh, again, yes, you are correct. There was no direct connection for Scourge. Genji, you have absolutely no connection to Atticus Styles whatsoever and barely well... know anything about him. Well, I might have heard my previous employer cursing his name a few times. Of course, you know, as a as a, a halfling slave master, Azalea Thrun would have uh, most definitely hated the freer of halflings, uh, the man they call Jane Atticus Styles. <laughs> uh, Aces, what is your connection to Atticus Styles? Perhaps the most dire of them all. Well, I was minding my own business, flying over to Mwangi. Forest finally got my freedom from the Chalaxian Empire, and then bam, a fog came in, and I was aboard a ship naked with no gear, used as a battery source for about three. I'm thinking three months, but it probably was a year. You can't really remember when you're stuck to a pole for that long. It was three months. It was three months. And he wanted another month out of you for service, for saving your life during that fog. Say, quote, unquote. Yeah, sure. I mean, his point of view and your point of view may differ, but... All right. He's a monster. So, let's get down to business then. And that business is murder. Atticus Styles is going to reach out, and he says, 
I have become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. And he holds out his hand like this, in like a hook fa fashion. And he holds it out towards uh, books. Let's see if he can make a touch attack on books. Right, so books feel the oxygen in your lungs being pulled out. You make okay, a so nice. save. Airplane. Right. Mm -hmm. So my initiative was higher than his. Right, but remember, when you guys move over here, you're all flat-footed for the first round. Okay. Boarding takes a full round action that leaves you flat-footed. Yeah. Until we get higher level and you get the mention door, it'll be awesome. So I... Are you spellcrafting what he's doing here? He is trying to steal the air from your body. If you'd like to fort save that out. <clears throat> okay, um, you manage to keep the oxygen right where it needs to be. You know, right in the part that breathes it in and exchanges it with carbon dioxide. Yeah, so he just he just wanders over here and he's just like, Die, books, die! And he Darth Vader's you, but you keep it right where it needs to be. And we come back to the other map with Captain Ferris. All right, Captain, what would you like to do this round? You can uh, mark off that your catapults are uh, done loading for one round. They're done to two rounds. I want him 90 feet forward. Um, so you could accelerate the ship by 30 feet by making your piloting check and then uh, stay the course, which will move you 60 feet forward. Good enough. So you accelerate to 60 and you'll need to make a second check. Alright, so while your ship starts picking up speed, you don't manage to make any significant progress. I don't really know how that works, but I th again, I think your crew are so weirded out at having someone competent on deck that they're dropping everything. And, you know, it's still kind of crowded. You know, you've got like 38 crew members there. Some of them are just standing on deck not doing anything in silent protest. They're just getting in the way. Okay, uh, Sifri is uh, having some issues. I will continue to play as him. We roll around, and it is Book's turn. What happened in turn order? It's gone. It disappears when we go between maps, but don't worry, I've still got it. Ah. Uh. Where am I? Where am I? I'm going to do a knowledge check to discern his um, true nature. Is of course a uh, knowledge. Are we back on the deck map? Yes. Can you uh, guys I see am not. Yourselves? No. Uh, I cannot see the deck map. I only see water. There we go. I like you. Okay. Did you play the seventeen? I don't know if that's good I enough. cannot, as we switch between maps every time, the turn order is going to disappear. Gotcha. So, there's no reason to uh, to reset it, because it's just going to keep disappearing. Uh, let's see here. You can ask two questions about Captain Atticus Styles. Uh, does he have any weaknesses? He has absolutely. Um, he has the defensive ability of rejuvenation. As long as he is attached to this world, he will. He and his ship will reform themselves every one to four days. Okay. Um, 
Does he have any uh, DR or resistances? Um, nope, he just has immunities on dead traits. So, what you would expect from an undead guy. Okay. I passed that information along. Okay. Oops. And what would you like to do with your turn? I'm going to move in position and uh, say, Today's your last... Tonight's your last night aboard the Night Eagle. Any last words? And... So, I, like, there's a sea spray around him. He's, like, got his hand clutched up towards you. He's like, Ah, tis your last night on the Night Eagle books. I'll get you once and for all for doing in me wife thingy. Ah. I know twas you that poisoned her. It was not me. And I'm going to say, You have been blinded by your hatred. And I'm going to glitter dust him. That and uh, exclude the party. Best. Okay. Can you glitter dust him? Is that DC 20? Okay. He fails. Six. What level are you? Is this spellcaster? Uh, five, fifth. <clears throat> okay. So he's got five rounds of that. Sorry, I'm also editing the cameras at the same time we're doing all this. Good times. All right. That is an impressive DC to beat. I was helped by some inherent bonuses from this <laughs> vision quest. Vision quest. What's it up to now? 19? The DC. Uh, uh, my DC, I got a greater spell focus conjuration, so... Uh, greater spell focus. Yeah. So, that's like... Yeah, that's a solid 20. Yeah. That was crazy. I think I did something wrong there. Okay, uh, Anika Styles can't make any attacks like that. Uh, he is going to toss his harpoon at books. So, there's that. And... That will horribly miss. And as a move action, he yanks it back, given that it is tied off to the mast back here, so he's yanking on the rope and pulling it back to him. And he makes his next save versus Glitter Dust. And I think he fails. You said it was a 20, right? Okay. Wow, this mute button will not go away. It's pushing my camera out of position. But all right, I dealt with worse things today. Kamakiri, what are you doing? Uh, what are valid spaces to attack him from? Uh, anything that's on the top deck up here. So this square and... Yes, you'd have to square. either climb up the side of the deck there or come up the stairs where Scourge is. Uh, how about if Scourge on his turn nestles into here and I just nestle myself into there? I don't know that that's what Scourge is going to do. We'll see when Scourge's turn comes around. Would you like to tell Scourge to do that? Yeah, I'm gonna relay that information. Like, hey, Scourge, let's get to, let's get on both sides of him. So Scourge is like, I'm gonna rage. That's what I'm gonna do. He <laughs> his weapons. Get mad, Rocky. Get angry. So oh, did we lose Craig again? Yeah, we did. He said that things were getting hectic at his house. I assume that okay. something's happening. So, so let's. Uh, I guess going up the stairs that way. Okay. And he's blind, right? He is currently blind. That means he's flat-footed to my attacks? Yes. Oh, I don't even need a flank. Single attack, saw to saber. And I'm assuming a 28 hits? It's uh, 12 and 9 for 21. So you like stabbed right through the middle of him. He's like, ah, tis be a sawtooth saber cutting through me. You must be a chillish assassin, you coward. Not... What is What is this? Red Mantis, come on. Like, yeah. sawtooth saber is the staples of the Red Mantis. Right, but you work for the Chellish, right? I mean, assuredly, there are probably a bunch of Chilaxian nobles who hire the Red Mantis. 
Oh. I kind of look over to him and kind of give him the dirty eye. You work for the Chillish? Used to. Mm. This is really a discussion you want to have during combat? Sifrin is... says as he runs, he's like, Rah! <laughs> <laughs> Does this always happen? We have conversations like this when we fight this guy. Seven, and he'll take a minus two, so he'll roll a plus five. He's not going to rage. He's not going to do his rage stats. That would land. He will do his damage plus power attack plus sneak attack. A D8 plus five plus 1d6 plus two plus four. D8 plus five plus four plus 1d6 for 21 from behind. So he's like, Sifrig's like, I hit him just as hard as you did, Kamakiri, and I don't even have to have those fancy abilities. And then he's like, I'm not even raging right now, I'm just really angry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even mad right now. What fancy abilities? You know, ninja abilities. So fancy. I didn't even use any of my fancy ninja abilities. Yeah, but you will one day. Ferris, we're back to you in the queue. So, uh, a serving boy comes up to you with a, a glass of uh, rum punch, you know, like 30% uh, alcohol rum, and, uh, you know, it's got, like, brown sugar in it and orange, and uh, there's also, like, sliced bananas on the tray, and he's like, Excuse me, Captain, can I offer you some refreshment during this battle? Very kind. And... In contrast to that happening, of course, like, all the men on deck are, like, running into each other, loading these catapults, hoisting lines and yanking stuff, and, uh, you know, you just see Ferris sipping at this juice. No, no, I'm not sipping at it. I take the juice, I smile, and I say perhaps he could get some water to the crewmen. Oh, he's like, of course, ma'am, of course. He, uh, and he then I run, set the drink to he, one side and continue steering the boat. He moves quickly. He he power walks below decks to get water bottles. Of course, this is proprietary technology from Port Peril. Uh, so next round, your catapults will be loaded, and then they'll be ready to be aimed. Uh, what would you like to do with your boat? Um, that is... Go ahead and... Okay, all uh, full ahead, so you're accelerating to 90. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen. Uh, actually, stay the course. Okay, stay the course. So you can move forward uh, 60 feet. Or forward diagonal. So, however you want to move forward 60. Then we finally get back to Corn Maelstrom. So you guys notice, like, you know, over your shoulders, you hear all this shouting and, and you see the queue, like, lumbering at a decent speed. You know, not at full speed yet, but it looks like it's preparing to ram the back end of the Night Eagle. And Ferris is just, like, standing there at the side of the deck. You know, she's got, like, a plate, plate of uh, bananas right next to her and she's looking, like, directly at you guys as the <laughs> ship just trundles along. Maelstrom, what's happening with you? Okay, I will now move right over. Try to get a good shot. I think shot, good shot would be right here. I was about to move over there, but I realized the wheel's right there. I'm going to shoot this guy. What are you shooting him with? I'm shooting him with the um, Bane Undead Arrow. Okay. Oh, nice nice shot out. Three months! Three months you used me as a battery. For what? Saving me from a fog? <clears throat> so uh, you hear him cry. He's like, oh, oh, this burning in my chest. Oh, what is this? It's Who revenge. is that talking to me? It's revenge, mofo. He's like, revenge. 
I know of revenge. He, it looks like he's having a heart attack. Like, his left arm is clutching at his chest. And uh, he's trying to pull that undead Bane bolt out. Uncle Books, what's happening with you? <clears throat> I did not poison your um, your wife. It's his wife, right? Not daughter. Um, you have me mistaken for another crime. Let us put this behind us and end our our dispute. But Never. until very well, <clears throat> and I'm going to cast grease um, and exclude uh, scourge and uh, kamikaze Whatever. from the area. So like up I'll here. Okay, he needs to make a reflex save. I think that's probably going to fail if your DC is 20. Okay, so he like slips and falls back and he's using like his uh, his harpoon to try to prop himself up. But it's not working too well. Anything else? You're moving. Okay, uh, and I mean he felt that Scourge and Kamakiri had both uh, hit him. So he's actually just going to blind toss. Uh, Kamakari and Scourge are both can get AOs on this, and uh, as long as you don't roll a one, you'll hit him and slay him. So if you want to go ahead, Kamakari, and make a blow, we'll see if it hits. Okay, yeah. That Stab is the. Him while he's down. That is a crit stab. You've killed Atticus Styles, and uh, the ship comes to a stop. So let me ask, what's happening on the queue? You know, you see, like, this, the the 30-foot-wide shield of souls that was surrounding the back end of the ship just sort of, like, goes up into the sky, and you hear, like, this, no, And you see Atticus Styles like, get sucked into the rune on the back of the ship. I tell the party, we only have a day or <clears throat> two to destroy his ship before he comes back as a spirit. It is his rejuvenation ability. Hey, I will tell who's the that? Who's that ghost standing on the front? So he's still got his sword out, like pointing towards you guys, but he hasn't moved at all. I'm going to uh, approach uh, Kid Tomes with uh, okay. with 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 all acts of uh, you know hands out, you know pacifism. Um, and say, and and walk. Well, I'll do my best to walk toward him, towards him. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, what's the rest of the crew that's on board doing? Scourge is uh, ordering teams to get down there. It looks like there's four points of plunder in the hold of the Night Eagle. I'm drooling so hard right now. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and add that to our current total. Okay. We now have ten plunder. Uh, and what is the queue doing? I am waiting for our crew members to vacate and then we will cap until it's. I think you broke up there, Lorraine. Something about waiting for your crew members to vacate. I got it. We're going to use Skype for video, and then we're just going to use, like, TeamSpeak or Ventrilo. Genius. Genius! <laughs> so good at bad plans. Okay, wait for the Dolphins crew to get off, and then sync it. All right. Uh, Maelstrom, Kamakiri, are you guys doing anything while you're, you know, standing back here? Loot. You're just going to help the crew in offloading the loot? I mean, yeah, there is, is there any special loot? Uh, Scourge's harpoon is still there. It's a plus one seeking harpoon. Pick it up. When it, sure. is, it has a special quality that when it's tied to a mast by its 30 foot of rope on the end of it, uh, any target hit by it, it also gets a grapple check to be grappled to the mast. Huh. We can use that. 
Mm -hmm. Well, it's difficult to use offensively because you'd have to tie it off to a mast first. Yeah, but you know, some. Yeah, yeah. So cool, though. Okay, uh, so jumping to the front of the ship, we have uh, Kid Tomes, Ghost Kid Tomes, consulting his uncle. And uh, he just stands there as you approach Novarti slash books slash bottles and says nothing but holds his sword out towards you. <clears throat> Kirill, I beg for your forgiveness, for I have wronged you in life, and now have placed you in this precarious position. It was me withholding information about Attica Styles being your father that started this, and now I want to lay your spirit at rest. What can I do to release you from this undeath? He says, Uncle, I forgive you for your horrible actions towards me and my father. There is only one way to free my spirit. You must destroy the rune and the night eagle with it. I will do it. I will, I will do it if it's in my power immediately. He says, I will see you in hell then, Uncle. I'll make sure you have, keep it warm for you. Do you have any last wishes? For your uh, remains. He says, Well, I wish they weren't at the bottom of the ocean right now. <laughs> I thought we got his remains. Yeah, I think you actually did grab his body. <laughs> I you think we did. Yeah, didn't grab bury... his sword. Maybe that's what it was. Yeah, we were says, able to grab everything but the sword. I want you to bury me next to my mother back in Keonan. It would be my great pleasure to do so. I will... Do it immediately uh, when I have <clears throat> the most opportune time to. Okay. And then Nothing like a, a multi-month trip across the world to yeah. the yeah, most heavily Keonan? secured elven nation in the world. We're from Keonan? Shit. I had no idea. He's an elf. He's a real elf. He's not one of them other elves that like comes from non-elfy nations. They're fucking real elves, man. Real aquatic elves. They're elf core. I'll do it immediately when it's convenient. <laughs> it's an excellent way of repeating what he had said. Mistral is just hacking at this place right here where he was in prison with an axe, just trying to destroy it. Okay, all right. Just so, like you know, after like fifteen minutes of work, you chop down the front mast. And I'm just like kick it over, like ah, that feels so good. Books, I assume you're doing something to the rune on the back of the ship. Yeah, I am fireballing it. Um, okay. Like, it it turns, like, black when you do that and starts shriveling up, and the whole ship starts sinking in the process. Do you have eight rounds to get off the ship? Woo! <laughs> well, we got loot. Through expeditious uh, crew management, you have already unloaded all four portions of loot. But is there anything mm -hmm. you'd like to do before the ship goes down. I mean, is there any uh, remainder of Kid Tomes at all, or is there? Is he just, like, stays on board? You guys have Kid Tomes' body already. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean his apparition. Nope. As soon as you okay. destroy the rune, he's gone. Okay. All right, so... Leave the ship. You guys gain two disrepute and infamy for triumphing over a legendary scourge of the Fever Sea. What? Yes. What? Yes. What? So they don't actually have Grog on the queue. They only serve, like, uh... Cavassier or something. What's so that? Fancy. Some Canadian alcohol or something. You know, like, really high-quality, red-label Canadian alcohols. <clears throat> and they don't they don't have like pint sized cups, everyone just has shot glasses that you know that like shot glasses from the different ports that they've been in and they just hang them off of their gear. You know, like I Heart Port Peril or Absalom number one. Uh that's so bad. Yeah. Well they get an entire Additional round of whatever their booze of choice is. And they give up three hearty cheers for Commodore Sarissa. Ferret, Ferris, sorry, Ferris. 
It's so hard to remember what everyone's fake new pirate names are sometimes. Like any good pirate, you just gotta make sure to have a dozen or so, in case the cops catch you. What? No, I'm not the mass murdering, war crime committing Captain Blackbeard. I'm slightly graybeard. Because I've aged a bit. <laughs> I, uh, I relay all the information that we uh, gathered in that battle to Cap uh, Commodore Ferris. And uh, the intention of one day whenever it's convenient <laughs> to bury the... Uh, Kit Holmes' last request was to 